start with with the mantra om vang me manasi pratishtha mano me vachi pratishtham aviravir mahe di vedasya maani sthah shrutam me ma prahasi anena dhitena horatran samdadhami ritam vadashyami satyam vadashyami tanmam avatu tadvaktaram avatu avatu mam avatu vaktaram avatu vaktaram om shanti 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 All right, so today we will take two small hymns uh, from Vasishtha. Vasishtha is a well-known rishi who belongs to this Purva Rishayaha. And um, you know the story of Vasishtha, every Indian knows in this story. Yes, it's such a beautiful uh, being and he Maitra Varuni, you see his family name, his lineage, his Gotra. He belongs to Mitra and Varuna. Mitra and Varuna are his parents, as it were, his spiritual parents. Uh, so he, uh, his diction, his uh, language is so luminous and so going beyond every wildest imagination that we will see today. We will take these two hymns to Adityas, 51 and 52. They are only six uh, trishtup. Mm. Adityanam avasa nuntanena sakshimahi sharmana shantanena anagastve Aditi tve tu rasa imam yajnam dadhatu shroshamanah. Adityaso aditir madayantam mitro aryama varuno rajeshtah. Asmakam santu bhuvanasya gopah pibantu somam avaseno adya. Aditya vishve marutashya vishve devashya vishve Rebhavasya Vishve, Indro Agnir, Ad Ashvina, Tushtuvana, Yuyampata Swastibhih Sadana. This is a um, perfect verse in every way, in the sound, in the meter, in the meaning. Uh, it's incredible when you understand the meaning. Immediately, it makes such a deep impression onto you. So, Adityanam Avasa Nutanayana, by the growth and nourishing of the Adityas, the sons of infinity. Adityas are the sons of infinity. Aditi is infinity, infinite consciousness force, the Divine Mother. By her faculties, or with the growth of her faculties, or with her son's growth, by the growth and nourishing of the Adityas, the sons of infinity, within us may we conquer by their peaceful presence and most auspicious stillness. Sakshimahi, it's from Rutsach, to overcome or to conquer. Uh, to prevail, may we prevail with their sharmana, with their peaceful and uh, shantamena, by the most peaceful presence and auspicious stillness. And then, second line, the sacrificial offering of ours, imam yajnam, um, the mighty lords, Turasach, who want to perceive it, who want to 
comprehend it who are listening should put it into the purity of the Divine Mother into the sinlessness anagastve aditve dodhatu may they establish our offering our transformation into the purity of the Divine Mother Vasishta invokes the stillness and the presence of Adityas by affirming their support in our growth, asking them to accept the offering and to place it into the very consciousness, power and bliss of Aditi. Aditi Tve, which is always pure, Anagas Tve. This is the, the small letters here. It's a Griffith translation. Through the Aditya's most auspicious shelter, through their most recent succor, may we conquer. May they, the mighty, giving ear, those who listen, attend, understand, comprehend, establish this sacrifice to make us free and sinless. Adityaso aditir mada yantam mitro aryamava runora jishthach asmakam santu bhuvanasya gopa pibantu somam avaseno adya. May Adityas and Aditi inflame us. Madayantam. Madayanta can be translated as gladden us, bring delight, intoxicate, inflame, inspire us. May they make us full of divine madness, <laughs> ecstasy. Mitroar Yamava Runora Jishta. Huh? You got a little frozen Ladimir in, in between. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I am unfrozen now. Yeah. You are thawing. Maybe there is something with connection today. Let me check. Uh, I can connect to another internet. We can see him. I will try to connect to another. Pinko and I go and play. Okay. <laughs> so Aditi and Adityas, may they gladden us. Mitra, Mitra is the Lord of the Divine Consciousness. Aryama, the Lord of the Divine Power. Varuna, the Lord of the Purity of the Divine Existence. Rajishtach, the Most Luminous. Or oh, upright, as it is translated here. Asmakam Santu, may they be ours. Literally, Asmakam Santu, may they be ours. Bhuvanasya Gopach, the protectors of the world. Pibantu Somam, may they drink our ecstasy, our delight. Avaseno Adya to increase us or to strengthen us or to make us grow today. So by drinking our soma, by drinking our delight, they strengthen our divine qualities, our divine consciousness in us. May they be ours, the guardians of the world and partake of our delight for our increase today. Root mud is used in causative form, but in the Atmanepadam, it's quite interesting, in the middle voice, which makes it difficult to translate. The sense of it would be something like, may they gladden us for themselves. May they inflame themselves within us, as it were. 
not to inflame us, but inflame themselves within us. And thus becoming part of ourselves, though they are the guardians of the world. And by drinking Soma, Soma, that delight we generate by the presence of our soul in this world, they can partake of the enjoyment we offer to them here for our growth today. First they have to inflame themselves within us, then they have to become part of us, and then they can partake of our enjoyment here and now. So there are stages of... Uh, they are not immediately visible because it flows so perfectly. You don't see these uh, one by one uh, intruders of the divine qualities within ourselves. I was frozen again, yeah, or something. No? All right. And then the third verse. Adityach vishve, marutashya vishve, devashya vishve, ribhavashya vishve, indro agni rashvina tushtuvana, yuyampata svasti bhik sadhana. This is the refrain which he which is like a signature of Vasishta, Yuyam Patos Vastibhik Sadhana. When you see it at the end of the hymn, it is actually telling us immediately that that is Vasishta's hymn. Only he has that signature, Yuyam Patos Vastibhik Sadhana. By the way, Rishis, many Rishis have their particular signature at the end, refrain which tells us immediately to whom the hymn belongs. That is his signature. May you protect us always with your well-beings. <laughs> with your well-beings. So beautiful. Aditya Vishve, all the Adityas. Marutashya Vishve, all the Maruts. Devashya Vishve and all the gods, Ribhavashya Vishve and all the Ribhus, Indra, Agni, Indra, Agni, Ashvinao, Tushtuvana, being established within us, being affirmed by our mantras within us. You constantly protect us with your perfect existence. Pata, protect, but protect in a particular way, by filling, by filling and completing us, complete us with your perfect existences. All the Adityas I just read, this is the Griffith's translation of and my interpretation, all the Adityas, all the Maras, all the gods, Ribhus, Indra, Agni, Ashvinas, all are affirmed within us. You protect us always with your well-beings. This is the culmination of the hymn for all universal beings. Join them, the Adityas, within us and become part of our individual self, which thus grows into the universal consciousness. We become universalized by their presences in us. Uh, Vladimir? Yes. Who are, who are the Adityas and uh, the, there, was, there was another... Adityas are the faculties of the Divine Mother. We spoke about them from the beginning, you remember? Sat, Chit, Tapas, Ananda, uh, and Triple Supermind. That is Sat, Varuna is Sat, Mitra is Chit, Aryaman is Tapas, uh, Bhaga is Ananda, Bliss, uh, Daksha is all uh, inclusive. Uh, all uniting knowledge of things, of manifestation. Amsha is one in many in many in one. It is the, the part of our soul, the spark. 
and Surya or Aditya is the supramental manifestation through his rays. These are the transcendental godheads, the guardians of light, as Sri Aurobindo translates, Gopa. Gopa literally protector, but Go is light, Pa is protector, protectors of light. They are the Adityas. And Aditi is the Divine Mother. The consciousness souls. Hmm? And the Ribhus, Ribhus are different, yes. Devas, Ribhus, Maruts, these are all classes of the gods. By the way, I have my article about them. I can send you the article if you want to know more. Um, yes, yes, Maruts are the energies, mental energies, which are seeking the truth. You know, the Indra and Maruts, they were rivalries. They were meant to be rivalries. So Maruts are the, the, uh, the children of Diti. Diti wanted to produce a warrior who would be, who would conquer Indra. She was so mm, frustrated that Indra killed her sons. Uh, before he, he Indra destroyed Vritra, yeah? and uh, um, she wanted to create a, a warrior, a hero who would kill Indra. <laughs> so she concentrated, she invited Kashyapa. Kashyapa is a mysterious uh, Rishi who comes to help always to conceive some demons <laughs> with Diti. So he conceived a son. She was bearing a son for thousands of years and she wanted to bring that hero who would kill Indra. And Indra knew about it and he was worried actually because she was becoming very mighty and powerful. So one day secretly he entered into her womb and when the, before the, the hero was born, he cut the, her embryo into 33 pieces within the womb and she brought to birth 33 maruts so they were not one being but 33 beings and what happened the magic happened because he entered into her womb and shaped their forms as it were cut them into pieces um, he became their father as it were secondary father so to say so they were no more the enemies of Indra, they became kind of his companions, his sons, as it were. So he is Marutvan, he became Marutvan, as the Veda says, the, the father of Maruts. And he led them into the battles. They are the mental energies which are seeking the truth. But you can direct them in any direction, Maruts. And that's the problem with them. They do not have the leadership, so to say, they can search for the truth anywhere. By the way, Sri Aurobindo speaks about um, uh, this of India's courage. He says only in India they have courage to deny even God and to accept even materialistic point of view and search for the truth there in the materialistic point of view. They, they don't mind, you know, this. They are so free. And that is the Maruts. Maruts can look for the truth everywhere. Oh, so nice outside. Beautiful. <clears throat> you can see that. That is in France, in uh, Fountain Blue. You know, most probably, yes. I think it becomes green. Lovely, beautiful sky, yes. So these are the Maruts. And without Maruts, Indra would not be able, because Indra is transcendental godhead, to come into this lower hemisphere. It is them who lead Indra into the depth of inconscient. He can bring his light into the depth and transform our being. They become his companions. They are the ones who destroy the Vala, the subconscious cave, together with Indra, with his lightning. And their weapons also are 
sharp with his light, with the Indra's transcendental Vajra light, lightning. So these are the Maruts, the mental energies which drive us. Once you direct them, they will not stop until they find the truth. They are very, very persuasive, very powerful energies within us. And the Ribhus are different beings. They are those actually who shaped our consciousness, which can contain the delight. Well, you see, the Vedic psychology is so profound and so elaborated that we know nothing about it, because who could think of that we need to have a vessel to hold the delight, the divine delight, but we need, otherwise how would we maintain and contain the delight? So the Ribhus, there are three brothers, three Ribhus actually, who, who shaped our vital, mental, and supramental vessel to contain the transcendental delight. The first of them was Tvashtar, very archaic, very cryptic godhead. Tvashtar means literally a carpenter. He created a first ladle or first vessel, physical body, which can contain the delight. He actually created the organic matter, Tvashtar. But after that, we had to create the vital body which could contain the delight, mental body which could contain the soma, and finally, or oh, ambrosia, or oh, immortality, and finally the, the supramental. And all these bodies were created by Ribhus. And they became so famous, they were not gods, but they became so famous that they became kind of gods and they share the Soma Yagas, Soma, the delight at Soma sacrifices together with gods. Very uh, mysterious beings. I never have heard about Ribbus. I mean, for the first time I've heard it, it sounds very amazing actually. I'd like to read more about Ribbus. Definitely, there's so much. Shubindu says this, uh, this psychology of universals is so profound and we know so little about that culture, of that psychophysical tradition. Um, so their views are universal views on how we actually became what we are. They see from another shore, from behind the veil, what is uh, what is really going on with us. Mm. And then, of course, Indra is the lord of the divine mind. He is the power of intuition who brings the lightning who opens up the true vision in the lower hemisphere with his lightning. He is destroying all the dark forces, torn, tearing the, 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 the veil and shows us how things are. Agni is the, the divine will growing within, calling to all the godheads, brings them down and sacrifices them here. Ashvins is another dual deity, which is very mysterious, which is, which is enlightening our vital, our vitality. Our vitality consists our vital pranic world, our emotions and uh, feelings and sensations are charged with the supramental light by Ashvins. They are two of them, they are dual, they are two riders on the horse, horse is the vital force, and they are two riders, and uh, they bring the knowledge and power of the supermind into our vitality. Our vitality is split into duality. Our vital force is always dual, force itself is dual, always dual. One part is knowledge, the light of knowledge, and the other part is power, 
The knowledge is the upper part, the power is the lower part, and they create the tension within our life force. You know, Nakula and Sahadeva, these are two uh, brothers, they are Ashwins. One was more uh, knowledgeable, other was more powerful. It's interesting, you will see this immediately in Mahabharata. So they kind of enlighten our vitality, our life region. They make our life divine, as it were. And they are the first healers, the greatest healers, because through the vital force, bringing the light of truth into the vital force, you can heal everything in the physical body. That harmonization between the knowledge and power. So these are all the Godheads are mentioned in one flow. They all have to join the Adityas and become part of our consciousness. Our individual being has to become universal in all these functions and faculties. Uh, and may they always fulfill us with their perfect existences. And then there is another hymn, only three shlokas, again three trishtups, and I want to take these two hymns together today, just to show you the Vasishtha's approach to Adityas and Aditi. Adityaso Aditayak Syama Pur Devatra Asavo Martiatra Sanema mitra varuna sananta bhave mandyava prithivi bhavanta. This is profound. Adityaso aditayak syama. May we become adityas and adities. It's literal. I am literally translating it. May we become Adityas and Adities. And this is shocking because Aditi is only one, the Divine Mother. How can we become Adities, many Adities? So Griffith cannot believe it in his eyes. So he cannot imagine that he, a man, wants to become Adityas and Adities, though we, literally it is this. He translates word Adityas in the vocative case because of that, or Adityas. But it is nominative, we can see it by, by the accent. Adityas, if it would be vocative, the, the stress would fall on the first syllable, and it is not. So, um, may we become Adityas in their infinite qualities which they all share in the Supreme Aditi and become also the, a fortress among the gods and among mortals. The fortress, the town, Pur Devatra Vasavo Martya, or luminous dwellers in the substance or vassals. Realizing, may we truly realize you, O Varuna and Mitra, becoming, may we truly become you, O heaven and earth. I know this is far beyond uh, what we can even try to think. <laughs> Vasishtha dares to, to think of it in such a vast and um, universal terms. May we become Adityas and Adities. Uh, Vasishta prays that we may become fully realized and harmonized with the Divine Mother, with all her supreme manifestations, embodying and sharing all her qualities and faculties, and at the same time maintaining our own identity in the manifestation. Pur, that means that we have to maintain our own being. Devatra, among the gods, Martiyatra, and among mortals, which cannot be altered neither by the gods nor by the mortals. And still, we have to become universal in all the powers of Aditi and Adityas.
possessing your presence and power here. May we truly possess you, says the Rishi. Where the root sun may be have many meanings to gain, acquire, obtain, gift, possessed, enjoy. May we enjoy truly you. Yeah? May we gain, acquire, obtain, possess. I like possess. May, may we gain, may we truly gain you. When we gain, may we truly gain you, not anybody else. And when we enjoy your presence, may we may we truly enjoy it we find the similar structure in the next phrase also with the root bhu can be translated also to be to become arise come into being exist live stay abide so i can translate this last passage the last line as but I, even more complicated. There is more to this verse. Its poetic rhythm suggests the meaning we cannot see in the grammatical structure of a sentence. Trishtub has a cesura. Cesura is the, the, the pause in between. Uh, after four or five syllables and the cadenza before the last three. Sanema mitra varuna sanantach. Bhavema dhyava prithivi bhavantah. This is the perfect verse. So, sanema mitra varuna sanantah. There is a cesura there. So, if that is true, then you have a totally additional sense to the verse. Even though dvandava of, of vocative mitra varuna or dhyava prithivi is undivided, there is a pause in between. They are in the middle of the pada, separated by caesura. So the natural breath of the poetic rhythm creates subtle suggestion, which is not in the syntactic structure of the sentence. May we win, Mitra, Varuna winning. May we become heaven, earth becoming. I, I found it so intuitively beautiful. May we win or conquer or acquire divine consciousness, um, acquiring, realizing the divine being. Yeah? May we become heaven, earth becoming. By becoming heaven, may we become earth by realizing the divine consciousness where may we be the divine being it suggests subtly this meaning may we want to win mitra varuna winning we want to be heaven earth becoming this can be an example how the poetic rhythm introduces the suggestion of a new shades of meaning widening our understanding of what the rishi wanted to say so if i come back to this verse it says it is um, full of divine luminous vision may we be syama aditya aditiyasah the Adityas and Aditya and Adities. Many Adities, many infinities may we become. Pur Devatra and the fortress among the gods or Vasus or luminous dwellers. This is the class of the gods, luminous dwellers within the substance and martyatra and among mortals may we maintain our identity may we become infinities and i and maintain our identity may we conquer the divine consciousness conquering the divine purity of being may we become heavens becoming earth 
mitrastan no varuna mama hantam sharma tokaya tanaya gopah ma vo bhujema anyajatam eno ma tot karma vasavo yachayadve may mitra and varuna make this great in us the guardians of light make this embodiment of peace and protection for our generations to come for the generations to come may we never partake of evil which comes from another may we never do what will turn you away from us o luminous dwellers in the substance now vasus is an interesting class of gods all the godheads adityas maruts indra agni everyone can become vasu when they are involved in the sacrifice the moment they are brought down they become luminous dwellers within the substance those who are changing us who are enlightening our unregenerated being so that's why reference is going to the vasos all the time may mitra and varuna make make this great in us tan no in us tat that mitra and varuna mama hantam increase or grant or grant for us or increase in us make it grow within us sharma tokaya tanaya gopa the protectors of light may give us the blissful protection tokaya for our seed or for our offspring tanaya and for our extension or for our generations to come not only for us but for everything else which will follow after us is our extensions as our children our grandchildren our future embodiments and projections and extensions in time and space ma vo bhujema anyajatam enah may we never bhujema enjoy or partake of enas evil anyajatam born from another not from you any any other source which is which creates the deviation from the path may we will never partake of ma tat karma may we never have the action yatcha yadve which deviates you from us which turns you away from us mitra and varuna should make this grow in us that is becoming harmonized with adityas within the divine mother and building up at the same time the fortress of our being which cannot be conquered neither by the gods nor by the mortals this self realization in mitra and varuna should support and increase even future generations grant to us that we may never partake of any sin for it is not coming from you but from another source may we never do that which may turn you away from us this part of the verse is very similar in the meaning to another verse from the book 5 makasya bhu makasya bhu takratu yaksham bhujema tanubhihma shesha samatana sa may we o mitra and varuna transcendental in will power never enjoy in our bodies other spirit than yours neither in our begettings nor in our expansion and the last verse turan yavo angiraso nakshanta ratnam devasya savituriyana pita cha tanno mahan yajatro vishvedeva samana sojushanta 
aspiring to the highest realization on Gerasas, on Gerasas, seeking the luminous reaches of the god Savitar, obtained them. May our great Father, who is of the sacrifice, and all the gods being of one mind, accept and take delight in this our realization. Aspiring for the highest realization on Gerasas obtained that, seeking the luminous obtained, Nakshanta, uh, maybe also wanting and not necessarily pastain tense, it can be present, or because it is a, a injunctive, it can be also should obtain, should realize, should get. Um, so if I go to Ranyavach, those who are speedy, fast, swift, Angirasas or Angirasas rishis, Nakshanta, uh, realizing, obtaining Ratnam Devasya Savituh, the wealth of the god Savitar, of the luminous sun, Iyanach, seeking or moving towards the Ratnam, we realize, obtain, discover, Pita Cha Tan No Mahan, and our great father, Yajatrach, of the sacrifice. Vishvedevach Samanasach Jushanta, and our Father, great of the sacrifice, should accept or agree Jushanta with happiness to that our offering, Samanasach, together with one mind. So, having one mind, all the Godheads should accept with happiness our growth or our offering. So Sri Aurobindo gives um, here a very uh, footnote. Sri Aurobindo explains this hymn in the secret of the Veda. I will read his uh, to finish our uh, exploration of these two hymns. But the 52nd hymn is still more significant and suggestive. The first trick runs, O sons of Infinite Mother Adityasach. May we become infinite beings, Adityach Syama. May the Vasu protect in the Godhead and the mortality, Devatra Martiatra. Possessing, may we possess you, O Mitra and Varuna. Becoming, may we become you, O heaven and earth. This is evidently the sense that we to possess and become the infinities or children of Aditi, the Godheads, Aditya, Adityasach, Mitra and Varana. We must remember the Mitra and Varana, we must remember, are powers of Surya Savitri, the Lord of the Light and the Truth. And the third verse runs, May the Amgiras who hasten through the goal, move in the traveling to the bliss of the divine Savitri. And that bliss, may our great father, he of the sacrifice, and all the gods becoming of one mind, accept in heart. It is quite clear, therefore, that the Angirasas are travelers to the light and truth of the solar deity from which are born the luminous cows, they rest from the panis and to the bliss which we are, as we always see, is founded on that light and truth. It is clear also that this journey is a growing into is a growing into the Godhead, into the infinite being, Aditya Siyama, said in this hymn, verse 2, to come by the growth of the peace and bliss through the action in us of Mitra Varuna 
and the vassals who protect us in the Godhead and the mortality. I know it is too much. Uh, I can feel it when I read because I am tuned towards you. I can feel how you feel. <laughs> it is like bewildering everything, kind of removing the edges. There is nothing to, to rely on. This is the problem with, um, with our narrow mentality or black and white mentality, which understands and realizes things by shades, by shading out, by contrasting. We cannot really flow into the light and to distinguish the shades of light, the hues of light. Uh, everything sounds too luminous, everything is too uh, kind of colorful, and uh, we are not used to, I, our mentality is not used to, to distinguishing these. But we have to train ourselves. This is our opportunity. The Veda is training our mentality and making it more perceptive, more receptive to these higher perceptions and dis distinguishing the hues of light. Okay, I stop here and open to your questions, uh, remarks. Um, go ahead. Rashi is thinking what to, what to hit with, yes? Rashi, go ahead. I want to know the Yoga Vashishta's story because all this is still very distant to me, but I want to know about uh, Vashishta. Guru Vashishta. Ah, oh, beautiful Vashishta, our great uh, Rishi. Maitra Varuni. There are few Maitra Varunis of this Gotra. There is another one. I thought we will read one more hymn today, but most probably next time. It is Agastya Rishi. Agastya is another Maitra Varuni. There are two of them, Vasishtha and Agastya. And Agastya, he is uh, dealing with uh, Maruts in Indra, and that would be interesting to see how there is a conflict between Indra and Maruts and how he resolves it. Yeah, Vasishtha, you know the story. Maybe we spoke even about this. Vasishtha was the uh, the great Rishi, and he lived in the... Uh, you know the story of the Kamadhenu, I'm sure you know. How, well, modern modern Indians, I do not know what they know, actually, truly speaking. <laughs> Sometimes I'm surprised I never heard of... Uh, anything of uh, Ashwin's or Aditya's or it's like... We have colonized education system where we are only factory going people who get slotted into certain things and we come out of school and college without knowing anything. Remember Vladimir? Mm. Well, I, I was surprised to to uh, to see it in the university that people never heard of these Vedic deities or even the Vedas much or even of these Rishis. Uh, they didn't even know who Rishis were. It was like a surprise for me, you know. But nevertheless, I would not judge. I know that uh, and that colonial education was trying to really remove Indians from their uh, great knowledge of the past. And they succeeded to a certain extent. Mm. To all extent. And even if you judge us, it's okay. We all love each other in this group. <laughs> all right. No, no. no, no. No need. Um, Vasishtha uh, and Vishwamitra. Do you remember Vasishtha and Vishwamitra's story? How they conflicted and what happened between them. And Vishwamitra is a great ratio of the third mandala, Vasishtha of the sixth mandala, or of the seventh mandala, sorry. So uh, Vasishtha was the living in the forest and once Vishwamitra, great king, he was a king that time, came to his forest. I spoke about this story before, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, you talked about the story. It's okay, it's just my memory then. Okay. 
Yeah, that was the Vasishta. When he came and he wanted the cow, the Kamadhenu, because Kamadhenu was so, you know, productive from the point of view of the king. He wanted to have that production in his kingdom and not in the forest of Vasishta. And that rivalry, how he went to Himalayas to, to become Brahmarishi, to conquer Vasishta, to kill him. And and he, how he couldn't succeed because only Vasishtha could give him that title of Brahmarishi. So actually it is the only story where Vishwamitra changed his Varna in his own life. Yeah? I, as, I, as far as I know, I don't know anybody who changed his Varna within one birth. Yeah, that he was Kshatriya and became Brahmana. Within uh, there was a possibility to do it in the past, but not anymore. Once you are born in a particular caste, you are till your death in that caste. Yeah? You can't shift. You can't change. Yes. Uh, Brother, what is mandala? I think I missed that session. The mandala. Mandala is the book. There are ten books in the Rig Veda. Ten mandalas collections of hymns. First mandala uh, is dedicated. Maybe I will show you there, since there is a question. You know how Rig Veda is built, yes? The whole text. Yeah. We looked and into it. That you summarize today's class in two, three lines, please. Yes, sure. <laughs> okay. What I... Let me look at this. <laughs> I wanted to you to have this sense of what Vasishta is calling to. He wants our consciousness to be universalized um, by the powers of uh, the Adityas. He wants us to be infinite in capacities. We become infinities and at the same time we maintain our identity. This is the summary. Pur, pur devatra uh, vasavo martiatra. May we stay like a fortress against the gods and the mortals. And uh, adityaso aditayasyama. May we be the adityas, infinite qualities of the Divine Mother. And may we be infinities. So, this is, um, of course, for the mind which thinks in terms of black and white, it's total contradiction and paradox what he says. But for the spirit, it's not so. Spirit recognizes the value to be infinite and to maintain one's own identity. This is the beauty of this vision of the Veda. I really like this line. You said, may we be infinite consciousness mm. and what, what struck me I never could think that somebody would dare to say may we be adities because adity is only one the infinite consciousness power may we be infinite consciousnesses and powers yeah, this is something so beautiful there is no end to these infinities. May we be infinities. Not one infinity, but we become infinities. This line does something, Vladimir, it's so powerful. Yeah. Uh, the Rishi dares to speak this language. He doesn't care that he will be misunderstood by others, or that they don't know how to translate it, or he just says it because he feels so, he knows so. All right, okay, so this is for today, and next time we may take another great Maitra Varuni. Agastya Rishi, Indra and Maruts, which would be very essential for us to understand the, the gist of the Veda. And Shubindu wrote a beautiful essay on it, so we can read it.
So would you mail us that article you were talking about on Maruts and all that? Sure. I think I did before. I'm only, yeah, I will do again. Yeah, sure. And uh, also, maybe if you can tell us in advance what you want to do the next course, then... Yeah, we will discuss it uh, at the end, yes, if, in case we, we want to, to study more of these things, yes. For me, um, so if I have a French translation, it becomes much easier. So yeah, you, I, you can find uh, Renu. Renu translated the whole Rig Veda. Oh, I have, I have, yeah. I didn't know what we were going to... Oh, okay. I will tell you. Yes, it will be Mandala one one seventy. Okay, one one hundred seventy. Mm -hmm. Okay, one hundred seventy. Okay, all right. Okay, okay. I'm closing with mantra. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santo Niramayaham Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Makashchit Dukha Bhag Bhavet Om Shanti 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 Adi Om Thank you.